Hello and welcome to the next couple sections where we're going to talk about a proof technique called the uniqueness method. In this particular video, we're going to take a look at what we call the direct uniqueness method. Essentially, what we're going to be doing is examining some statements that are of the following form. Show that an object X that has a property A is unique. And what we'd like to do is develop a strategy to prove that these statements are true. Now there's three things of importance that I want you to note. The first one is object X, the second one is property A, and the third one is the word unique. So this word unique, or the phrase one and only one, is the indicating word that we're looking for in order to use this particular proof technique. Essentially what we want to do is we want to show that object X with the specific property A that it has is the only object that has this particular property in the set of objects that we're looking at. So here's the strategy that we're going to use to prove such statements. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to assume that object X does have property A. That is, we're going to assume that object X has already been proven to have property A. We're going to deal with the case of how to construct such an object X in the next lesson. The next step is to assume that we have a second object. We're going to call that object Y, and we're going to assume that object Y also has property A. Then we want to use some mathematical logic to deduce that object X is actually identical to object Y, and this allows us to conclude that X is really the only object having property A, or that X is a unique object with property A. What I'd like to do in the next few minutes is go over a couple examples relating to linear algebra. Our first example is we're going to show that the zero matrix, represented here by a capital O, is the unique n by n matrix satisfying the following equation, O plus A is equal to A, for all n by n matrices, capital A. So first thing, notice that our keyword unique is inside of this statement. So next what we're going to do is try to find the object that we're going to claim is unique, and try to find the special property that this object has. Well, our zero matrix O, this is our object X. This is the object that has the special property that we're trying to show is unique. And the special property it has is given by this equation right here. That O plus A should equal A for all n by n matrices. So I've written that down here just to add a bit more clarity. Our object is the n by n zero matrix, and the special property we're looking at is O plus A is equal to A. All right, so let's get into the proof of this particular statement. Our first step is to assume that our object X has the desired property. So our first statement here is we're going to assume that the zero matrix does satisfy O plus A is equal to A. So that's step one of our procedure. When we move into step two, what we want to do is set up another object that has the same property as our first one. So we're going to suppose that the n by n matrix B also satisfies this equation, B plus A is equal to A. That is, when I add B to any matrix A, I get A in return. And now our goal is to show that O and B are actually the same matrix. So to help out with the next part of the proof, I'm going to label these equations. I'm going to call this one equation 1 and this one equation 2. Now our first equation is supposed to work for all n by n matrices A. So specifically, this first equation is also going to be true if we let A equal to B. So making the substitution of A equals B into our first equation, we get O plus B is equal to B. We can do a similar thing for equation 2. Equation 2 is also supposed to hold true for any n by n matrix A, so we could make the substitution A is equal to O into our second equation, and that's going to give us B plus O is equal to O. And now we have everything we need to finish up the proof. We're going to start by just analyzing B, we know that B 
is equal to O plus B by the previous slide. And we could change the order of these two n by n matrices because addition is commutative, so we can get B plus O. And again, by our last slide, we know that B plus O is equal to O. So what we've shown is we've shown that B is actually equal to O. And this leads us to conclude that O is indeed the unique matrix satisfying the particular property. In our second example, we have an n by n invertible matrix A and an n by 1 column matrix, we're going to call that x. We'd like to show that if the linear system a times x is equal to 0, where here our boldface 0 represents the n by 1 0 matrix, if this system has a solution, then the solution is going to be unique. We notice that the word unique is given inside the statement of this theorem. This means we should go back and try to find the special object we're going to be working with, as well as the property that this object has. In this case, since we're talking about a unique solution, it's our n by 1 column matrix x that's going to be the object in question. And the special property that our object has is that a times x is equal to the n by 1 0 matrix. So to summarize, our object here is the n by 1 matrix x, and the special property that it has is a times x is equal to the n by 1 0 matrix. So to start off our proof, we're going to assume that a is an n by n invertible matrix, and that x is a solution, or that it satisfies a times x is equal to 0. Because this is a uniqueness proof, we want to create a second object that has the same property as the first. So we're going to suppose that the n by 1 matrix y is also a solution, or that a times y is equal to 0. And what I'd like you to notice here is that both a times x and a times y are equal to this n by 1 0 matrix. This means a times x must be equal to a times y. Knowing that a times x is equal to a times y, we can multiply both sides by a inverse. We can do this because we know a is invertible. We know a inverse times a is equal to the n by n identity matrix. So the left hand side is going to simplify to i times x, and the right hand side will simplify to i times y. And this multiplication is well defined and makes sense. i times x is going to give us the n by 1 vector x, and i times y is going to give us the n by 1 vector y. So we indeed do have that x is equal to y. So we can conclude here that if ax equals to 0 does have a solution x, then this solution x is the unique solution of our linear system. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching this video. If you click here, well, yep, yeah, over here on this beautiful YouTube logo, you can head over to my channel to see some videos for my other math courses. You can also follow me on Twitter for updates for your course or to ask questions. All right, my little epsilons, stay positive.